How good? Footy is back. A draw last night and tonight. One of the great rivalries of modern football times. Hawthorne travelling down the highway for the first time in 14 years to take on the Cats. Matty Scarlett will join us at about 10 to 7. Sam Mitchell will be after that. 20 past 6, Jeremy Howe on that extraordinary game last. 36 apiece in the draw to get things underway. Footy is back. It's fantastic and wonderful to see these gentlemen as always. The captain is here, Luke Darcy. Hello to you, Darcy. Great yeah, to see you. Howard, great to be here. Great to catch up with this fine group of people. It has been a long, long time. Um, we organised a couple of chats just to get together. Nice of you not to turn up for either of them. <laughs> Howard, it Technical was noted. Issues. Nate Brown... <laughs> Didn't front for either of them either. Not a great sign of our unity, Juddy, but I'm very happy to be alongside you. How are you, mate? No, you steered the ship uh, valiantly through that uh, tough time, yes. Duke. So good to see you and the rest of the team tonight. And good to see Nate Brown. He's a little, uh, a little parched and... And puffed up love the time he saw him when he came on halfway through our, uh, our Zoom meeting. Nate Brown, good to see you. I tell you what, uh, 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 William Pike over in Perth and Belmont, at about that time on a Saturday night, he's flying. And he's <laughs> six of the last ten, and it's just hard to get onto that Zoom chat. But I've uh, had a lot of notes for tonight, for tonight's game. I think it's going to be uh, where you have to dissect it. And I'm just a little bit concerned that the judge is going to try and copy my notes. So I'm just going <laughs> to put them over here so uh, they can't be copied. <laughs> well, we'll, get, we'll get to the uh, issue of copying at some stage. <laughs> Uh, welcome to you, Damo. <laughs> How are we? Uh, we? We probably can't leave it too long until we get to it, though, can we? And, uh, and good evening to uh, the other three members Hello, of this, uh, this panel tonight, too. We'll, talk, we'll talk about the footy in a moment, but let's yeah. be honest, we don't waste a great deal of time on this show talking about football. No. There was a bit of a, a meeting before Juddy arrived tonight, <laughs> which is unfortunate <laughs> for you, to be honest. You're like, uh, I wasn't a part of that. <laughs> no. Um, Damo. Listen, this is your story. You're breaking the story on the back of what was reported in the paper today. Well, what was reported in the paper today, for those who might have missed it? Well, Chris is heavily involved in one of the great... Athletic wear companies, this... Leisure wear. I Leisure think wear, yeah. Cool. Active yeah. wear. Astra- Australia's fastest growing apparel brand. That's right. Yes. It's That's called right. Jagged and it's fantastic. And yeah. Juddy told us six months ago uh, yeah. that he was very happy because he was moving from a management role directly into the design area <laughs> of the business brownie. So our man's moved into the design area. His wife has stepped away from that, obviously, Beck. But, but this, this... And it's fair to say, are we... Not without its controversy in the past. No. Oh, Jack, Jack, it's, 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 it's had a rough run. There's the small Australian business focused on employing people and helping the economy. So, so that's the timeline of where we're at. Now, Damo, as the news breaker, you, you can tell us why this has unfortunately reared its ugly head. Well, just on that, I, I, I am one who likes to think people are innocent until proven otherwise. Correct. So there's been nothing proven against no. the, the judge on this. On Having this... said that, though, we tend to, if there is an issue, address it front <laughs> well, on. Well, that's right? what we do do, Dars. Well, and, and maybe we need to factor in the past when we consider the current Howie yes, because yes. Um, repurposing content was something that has also had been an issue with our <laughs> man, the judge. And for those who forget that, uh, we, we go back to last year, uh, Das, when um, <laughs> Judge was writing columns on financial matters, <laughs> international financial matters. And as you're about to hear, this did play out on Triple M Footy last year, the Friday Huddle. We yeah, brought it to our, our listeners' attention. And, and look, some people may have forgotten it, but it's important now, Howie. We re- yes. revisit it tonight because of what's happened this week. A mate of mine, Howie, he, yeah. he follows the football and he follows the stock market yep. and he subscribes to a lot of publications and a lot of emails that come through. So yep. this is the timeline of events here at 8.33am oh. on Monday. Timeline of events. Yep. <laughs> from my mate. Yep. He received the email alert for Scott Pape's Barefoot Investor. Yep. And he noticed this quote from a, a guy who meant nothing to me, but I've now researched him enough to know that he means something pretty big in the business circle. Right. Charlie Munger. Right. And he uses this quote, show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. And right. that was in a reference to the Royal Commission that's being held at the moment. Okay. Same so, mate of mine at 4.47 on the Monday gets right. an alert. Chris Judd's column's been filed on the age. <laughs> right. Talking yep. about a priority pick about Carlton. My favourite Charlie Munger quote is this, show me the incentive oh, and I'll no. show you the outcome. Oh, oh, oh. Now, Damo, <laughs> why have you chosen to bring that up now? You need to explain why. Well... <laughs> There's allegations of, of stealing something this week, Howie. Well, he's he stolen. Say it. Our man judge stole a quote last year. Yeah. I, I think he could be guilty before he's even charged well, with this. Later. But people just don't careful, understand. Just what, careful with where you tread with this, David. People don't understand what you're talking yeah. so, about. So he knocked off Scotty Pape's article, <laughs> repurposed it. Now, Thanks, Dust. Now, <laughs> now he's moved into design at Jacket six months ago. As he's yeah. told us, what's been reported today? Well, you said it before. There's an issue with 
some designs looking similar to another company's. Uh, no, what are you uh, saying, Damien? I'm what are you saying? saying? You're I, the one talking. I, what are you I saying? Want you, I want Jeez. you to get off this latest charge, <laughs> judge, but <laughs> I, was, I, I fear your backlog of work is, is so going to work. It was against. reported that there was a dispute between you and a small company of battlers in Byron Bay who were trying to do the right thing that basically you directly copied their designs. They're and not put that small, Howie. They're, they're international, these people. Oh, right. I like the but, fact that you put Greeny out front and centre and there are many quotes <laughs> from my man Greeny in the paper today, and it sounded like he was reading out of a, a legal journal. I, I love Greeny. Doing a great job, the CEO of Jagged, growing very strongly. We use a material that everyone's using. How would Nike use it? All the major houses, including Jagged, use it. Okay. There's been a disagreement. But that, I mean, that's what happens when you're at the top of the park. <laughs> yes, that's true. Even Van Gogh had his good you know? Well, it's not the, you, first you're, you're not yeah. the first disagreement you've been in, Jody. Uh, and I we don't like to go back over history. But... When you're living in the arena, Duke, these things happen. Well, you know, you guys, you sit in the background, you snipe. Damien won't even own his comments. Oh, you're saying Howie, and people are well, saying this. Now, put a pair I, of big boy pants I, on, Damien. You're going to come Jody, in. You've so all the designs, mate. <laughs> I, I will own this because you're starting to develop a timeline of controversy. <laughs> that's what worries me. When you, get, when you get your own on this date, this is what happened. <laughs> on another month, Juddy had another drama. And let's go back to the Mornington Peninsula. Oh, <laughs> no. no, no. I, I call it an environmental disaster down there. Fined $40,000 for unlawfully clearing vegetation. Now, wasn't it as though it was a couple of burnt trees? You know, 3,000 square metres. <laughs> It was of like, native vegetation. The Mornington Peninsula Council came out a couple of months after that saying you must get rid of fuel <laughs> on your property because of the bushfire risk. This right. is what happens when you're ahead of the game, Jack, <laughs> time and time again. It was I like, get punished for being early. It was Forty thousand like, dollar fine, Judge. It was the Exxon Nation. I was happy to give it. Howie. It was the Exxon Valdez of, of the Mornington Peninsula. That's what it was. The What's Exxon that? Valdez of the Mornington Peninsula. That's it's how they now refer to Judge. what you did to the environment down there. Untrue. Oh, you got one native. <laughs> 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 Toby Mitchell's got a cleaner shape oh. than you at the moment. <laughs> but, but I you're... reckon Nate looked at his notes for that. I reckon that's one of his notes he was right. I was going to steal. How happy is he? But obviously, Come Luke, on. the issue is this rubs off. This rubs off on yeah. all of us. It's not good for us no. at all. I mean, we want to associate with people of uh, similar integrity. And that's right. I don't want to go into the issue we had on the footy show. Nasty, nasty, nasty oh, no. issue. That one is well. So it's starting to become a little <laughs> bit... Close to home, are Howie. You, it's, are a, you seeing, it's not good for us. Are you seeing any more bombshells that are going to blow up at our face on a Friday before we go to air in the next month or so? To be honest, I think this is a win-win for you guys. I mean, you when you're down with your boogie boarding mates, getting picked on by the surfers down there at Bar, and it's all of a sudden you're going to have a little bit of street cred. You know, I mean, Duke's already sucker, sucker punch Robert Murphy in the back of the head. He's slimy as they come. Pur- purple hangs around with all sorts of underworld figures. So, and, and Nate Brown, we know Nate Brown. Yeah, he's got slimy undertones. So I think he is, is with that sin should cast the first stone here, Howard. And you just, just face the allegations front on. Now that you're in charge of design at Jagged, did you rip off someone else's? Did you do it? This is factually untrue that I'm in charge of design. We know that. And no, we didn't. Okay. And there are proceedings in place. I wouldn't be commenting too seriously Jeez. on this. And yeah, this should be for a serious tone. <laughs> <laughs> He's given us the back off for the <laughs> police. <laughs> <laughs> the old denied, denied, denied. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, that's a good first seg. What else have you guys been working on? <laughs> we were going to go into it lightly, but we thought we'd just go all in. Joe, is that all right? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Everyone happy with that? Uh, oh. Now that we've uh, adjusted uh, ourselves a little bit, have you got a little bit of news for us? Obviously a yeah, lot going on. Um, look, the COVID-19 breaches, which played out yesterday when Ollie Wines and Brandon Zerk Thatcher, the Essendon player, both copped a, a week for breaching them. It's had a, a follow-up today with Melbourne players um, Spargo and Kosea Pickett um, also being sanctioned today. And the AFL... According to Jalen, uh, only moments ago from the AFL, Spargo's copped a two-week ban and Pickett has copped a, a one-week ban. And, um, yeah, Spargo, I think, was picked to play in that team tomorrow against, um, against Q, uh, Carlton. Carlton, wasn't it? So, yeah, so they, they need to change their team. And I, I'm of the view they might need to rethink this because if they're going to come down with weak bans on on breaches of, of the nature that they've been to this point, there's going to be a lot of players missing... A lot of footy. Now, I'm all for it, and obviously the seriousness attached to the game resuming outside and, and beyond the guidelines that have been set by the governments and, and the, uh, the medical authorities needs to be of a nature that allows them to do it. But, um, look, some of these already are just... I mean, Ollie Wines is an example, and I don't have an issue with him getting a week, but he let a, a reporter onto the porch of his house. Um, again, he, he agreed not to do that in advance, but there's going to be a lot of 
sanctions if we keep going down this path. And if they start looking for it, there'll be a whole lot more too because there's people who've done equally um, as, uh, as problematically things as these guys already in the public eye. Pretty hard to police, Damo. Very. Such a number. I'm sure you've been involved at the club. I know you've got a bit on your plate at the moment, Judge, with a few legal issues, but w- what type of instruction have they been giving the players? Oh, it's immense. I've lost track of the number of restrictions and guidelines they've got to follow. Um, you know, obviously, training's broken up. The, the groups aren't training together regularly. Once a week, they get to train as a group. But essentially, they're still in the level of lockdown we were at our most intense. I mean, they can sort of leave and get a coffee, but if they've got young children, you know, those children can't have friends around to play or... Uh, it's very, very heavily uh, restricted. I'm not sure how long it'll last, Damien. You've mm. probably got better insight than me, but I think if we get through this two-week period after the marches, I suspect the world will start to open, open up, it up yeah. reasonably quickly. And, and SA government today has announced a, a relaxation on its strict border controls um, at a time in the next sort of six to eight weeks, which will allow hopefully the SA teams to go back into SA from southeast Queensland, and that will leave WA. But... Yeah, I, I think they'll view these latest um, restrictions, Judge, um, for four weeks, where we around two, three, four, five, which we're in this first batch of uh, refixturing. So it's a strange world we now live in, and I, and I understand. You know, there's a fifty-five page compliance document. I think the first came out to the clubs that the players had to absorb and get their heads around. I, I get it from an AFL point of view. How you can't afford the you know, they've promised the government they can handle all these situations, but. Some of it just is really hard to make sense of. I understand the players come in today into the locker rooms. One half the player in group is in one half, the other half. They go out in the field and they're about to tackle each yeah, other. Yeah. And so even that part of it, it, there's an inconsistency in all the stuff at the moment that, uh, you know, there will be people who just honestly make mistakes. And, you know, I'm coaching the under-13s at the moment and you're trying to control 40, 12-year-olds and get them not to exchange. Like it, it is just almost imp- – I think – I'm with you, Damon. If there was – the genuine breach that was done in a way that was, you know, thumbing your nose at the regulations, if it happens, you know, I suppose, how, how do you differentiate? But yeah, yeah. I'm with you. There's going to be a lot of – if this goes on longer, we're going to have a lot of players missing weeks just inadvertently making mistakes, I suspect. We can speak to Jeremy Howe directly after the break about those things. Nathan Brown come with a lot of notes tonight. You're sitting next to Juddy. You must be concerned, Nathan, that he might just – I don't need to cover him up, Howe. <laughs> I think he's going to steal some of our uh, – You're going with the top in, five. In, in telling You're going tonight. with the top five tonight. I'm going with the top five. Is and it... uh, the top five – is all about Howard. Oh, oh that'll be interesting. Buy any uh, McCafe coffee and you'd win free coffee for a year. How good is that? Visit mcdonalds.com.au slash coffee comp for details. Terms apply. Jeremy Howe next. McDonald's. Triple M Rocks.